Hello and welcome to part 6 of my X-Lights tutorial series. In this tutorial I will be covering the sequencing effects and kind of the basic overview of dropping effects into your timings. In the description of this video you'll find a direct link for downloading the x -Lite software. You'll also find a link to download a sample show which is what I'm working off here now in these tutorials. I also have a few links to my personal display, so you can go ahead and take a look at what I was able to do with the x -Lite software. So if you're following along in the series, you'll remember that we went ahead and created a new sequence, we inserted our groups, and then we went ahead and made our timing grid. Now I've gone ahead and finished off the timing grid and gotten the timings placed where I'd like them in my um, sequence that I'm doing here for my show. Okay, so now it's time to start actually dropping some effects into our timings. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's just start right from the beginning of the song and let's just zoom on in a little bit here. You see I've gotten pretty detailed with my timings. Um, so let's just play the song and see what starts off here. So you can see all the timings match up with the beat of the music. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you basically how to get the effects onto your timings and working with the effects in that manner. We won't get too detailed on getting right to the beat as you will be able to do that on your own and every song is different as to what you want to do with your effects. So with our groups, let's just try throwing something on here. Um, in the effects window, we have a bunch of different options. Um, there's lights off, lights on, bars, butterfly, circles. Then we've got color wash, we've got curtain, we've got DMX values. So if you have a DMX device you're controlling, you can actually uh, put in your DMX values with this. Faces, fan fire, it goes down the list, we'll go through some of them here. Um, so you've got a bunch of different effects to start off with. So let's just take something for example, um, let's just take the bars here and we're going to click and drag where we want to put that effect. So do I, let's see, let's try all of our matrixes here. I'm going to go ahead and place it there. And you can see by default it's got different colors and and patterns going on. Um, we can do a few different things with the effect here now. Now that we've got it placed where we want it, we can expand the effect to go a longer distance. We can click and drag and move that effect. You can copy an effect by either uh, clicking on it once and highlighting it, or you can select it in this manner. Um, and you can go ahead and use your copy and paste functions to paste that effect. When you paste it, sometimes it'll only paste it within that timing grid. Um, again, you can just click and drag and extend it. So now I've got, in this manner, I've got my floods and I've got my matrixes going in a bar pattern. So now within each effect, um, not only can you move it and rearrange it on your grid easily, um, you've got an effect settings window. And in this window, you can do multiple things. Um, the first thing, you can actually change this to a different effect right out of the gates. So let's say we want butterfly on our matrixes instead. We can click on that. That will then give us the butterfly effect that's only showing up on that specific group. If we wanted that effect to happen on, let's say, the whole entire house, we could simply just copy it and let's go down to our whole house group right here and let's go ahead and paste it in and I'm going to go ahead and extend that out make it a little bit longer of an effect and I'm just going to highlight and delete the other two effects I have on from earlier and now you'll see that the whole entire house acts as one model that that effect is then projected onto now back to the effect settings, within each effect you can change a m 
bunch of different things and you're just gonna have to play around and find out what you like and what's best for your display um, that's part of the fun in the sequencing in this case we're working with the butterfly effect and in this effect it allows us to first here we can change the colors we can either run the colors off the palette which we have below so we have uh, right now green blue and a a pink color selected um, but let's say we wanted blue and white. We could uncheck blue, white, and you'll see it changes it accordingly. These colors are also easy to change. You just click on the color and you can select from any different color pixel that you want to use. So very, very, very easy to change the colors. Also in this case it allows us to change the style. We can change the background chunks background skip, the speed, and you can change the style. So each effect has thousands of different options and configurations that you can play around with, whether it be uh, settings specifically within that effect, the colors. Within the colors you also have sparkles, which will add a twinkling effect to your... You can change the brightness of the pixels, so in this case they're at 100% power, we could bring them down to say 28%. Gets hard to, to view it on your preview window when you get down to a lower percentage, um, but it does allow you to change it. There's also a more advanced morphing function we'll I'll get into in further video tutorials. Um, fade in, fade out, very nice. Uh, you can put, say, a a half second delay of a fade in and a half second fade out on this effect. So as the effect starts it'll fade in and as it ends it'll fade out. Another thing on effects when you're working with them, when they're clicked and highlighted it'll show you the preview of it um, in that selected time range. So if within this time range, let's throw another, uh, let's, let's rearrange this here. Let's get rid of that. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's use the pinwheel. And let's throw the pinwheel on all of our matrices. Alright, doesn't look like much right now, but we're going to go ahead and give this a little added effect here. Alright, All right, so let's say we got the pinwheel going there it's going to loop through that cycle when I have that selected. So if we want to say, let's say we put uh, fire on our mega tree for that. Let's only go half the time period. We have fire selected right now, so it's going to loop through the fire cycle and anything else that's within that range will also appear. Um, and same thing here, if we have the pinwheel selected, it's going to show the fire only for that portion of the time. So that should give you the basic idea on how you drop effects onto the timing grid um, and then what variables within that effect you can actually change. Each effect is unique, it has its own options, uh, different things you can do with it, um, but again just a brief overview on how that works. There are a few more I do want to show you real quick and a color couple other items that we need to show you here. Um, within each group first off, for example, I have this group with my matrix 1, 2, and 3. So matrix 1, matrix 2, matrix 3. Within that group I can actually double click and expand it down to each matrix. So if I want to do something separate on each matrix I can, or I can combine them as a whole. So you can even get down to even further where, let's say, window matrix 3, if I double click that, then I've got each of my strands. And with each strand, you have each node. So you can get really, really detailed and precise with what you want to do. Um, I don't tend to go more than one level down just so I can do each model or element on its own. Um, so that is something to be aware of. Again. If I look at my snowflakes, I can double click that and I've got my three different snowflakes that I have on the roof. So I can do something, I can place an effect on just one snowflake 
or I can place an effect on all the snowflakes at once. So it just allows you more flexibility in getting down to the details. Um, so do be aware of that. Okay, so there are a couple other effects I'd like to show you real quick. Um, the first one is going to be the text effect. Uh, I'm, I just double click to open up the next group of matrices here. So uh, let's say I want to put Merry Christmas on this uh, pixel net I have on this top left window. Their effect is called text. I'm just going to click and drag it. And I'm just going to make that a little bigger and longer. So you can see now that Merry Christmas is scrolling across. Um, I already had it typed in here, but you can change this to anything. And it'll automatically change it there. You can also change the movement, which way it moves. Um, you can change the speed. You can have it rotating. I mean, you can have it do anything. So this is where you'll go to actually do text effects, whether it be on a mega tree or pixel nets like I have. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. The last effect I just want to show you here is the pictures effect. Now, this is a pretty cool effect if you do have a big pixel net or a big area. Um, let me just show you on the whole house group here, for example. I can click and drag, and I can go ahead and have a picture brought in that'll be displayed on the whole house model I have set up here. So I have a picture of a bell that I've got uh, in the sample files there for you. And you can see as soon as I selected it, it started playing it. And you can see it's quite large. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually just have this scaled. Yeah, it doesn't look quite right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and copy that, delete it, and I'm going to move it up to my window matrix. Let's say two. There we go. But what's happening now? It's fading in and it's fading out, which is fine, and it's got sparkles to it. I don't want sparkles. So there we go. Now you can see the bells are fading in and out. That was just a quick picture file. It allows you to work with that picture and do different movements and tons of different options with pictures. The best item to show you on this is the actual house preview window. That is a separate window. I know it might be hard to see in this tutorial, but you can actually resize this however big or however small you want it. Um, so it is kind of nice. It is flexible. I just have it in, I usually have it on a separate monitor so I can see the, uh, the whole house at once um, as I'm programming it. Uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I just have it shrunk down in the corner. Another thing to know about is how to actually see the results of these effects live on your lights if you do have them hooked up and configured properly with your computer. So all you need to do is go up to output to lights and you click on that and as soon as you click on that X lights is going to start sending out the communication to your controllers and actually what you see in your house preview is what is actually happening live on your lights that are hooked up so it's really cool you can program you know once you get your whole display set up you can actually go out and even program it in person um, I've found that the visualizer gives me enough of a uh, preview that I don't need to do it that way, um, but it is a cool feature. It allows you to, uh, whatever you're doing, as you, what you see is what you get live to your lights. And to shut them off, you can either hit the stop button, or you, more importantly, what you're going to want to do is uncheck output to lights. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump forward here. I'm going to go ahead and sequence the song out and show you what X Lights looks like with a fully sequenced song. Okay, so we're back here and you'll see I have pre-filled in and sequenced all of my song. Uh, this is the actual sequence I used for my show this last year. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Um, we're going to just pick a point here. I'm going to zoom in. You'll see all of my different effects are all in line with the timing. 
And if we just choose a point and play it, we'll see it in the preview here, what it actually looks like. And this is what my show actually looks like in person. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool, powerful tool. Um, I really love it because I use it for my, I have a 100% pixel-based show. Uh, it works great for that, but I do know it is very easy to add in the LOR controllers and DMX devices. Um, I will be doing a little bit of that for my next year's show. But Xlights is an amazing piece of software. Um, once you get used to using the effects and copying and pasting, it really cuts down on your sequencing time. I was able to sequence my 13-minute show within a week um, from start to finish. So it's, it's a very easy tool to use once you know how to use it. Lastly, to keep in mind is always to save, save, save your work. Make sure you save frequently every 10-15 minutes uh, just to make sure you don't lose it because Xlight is open source. Um, it is constantly being improved and worked on, um, but there are bugs every now and then and it will crash on you every now and then and you just want to make sure that you save your work frequently. So, hope you enjoyed part six of my Xlight's tutorial series. Please subscribe to the playlist as I will be adding videos as I can. Thanks again for watching.